Hello, welcome to Optimum and Suddenly Business live series event, a small talks for small business. We are thrilled that you have joined us today. I am Mirna Eusebio, Lithgo, Senior Vice President of Product and Marketing at LT's Business, parent company for Optimum and Suddenlink. At Optimum and Suddenlink Business, we are more than just your internet provider. Offering a wide range of services from advanced voice and data, internet security and entertainment to more than 400,000 businesses across 21 states in the US. We also offer mobile solution services nationwide through Altice Mobile. Small businesses are the backbone of our communities and the last few months have been challenging as the way we do businesses and the needs of consumers have shifted in response to COVID-19. It has been a priority for us ensuring our small businesses customers had access to our reliable connectivity services through it all. Whether businesses were shifting to digital or requiring new flexible remote work solutions. At the corporate level, Altice USA has been active in supporting our communities as they face challenges resulting from the pandemic. From donating to national organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of America and Feed in America, to providing affordable broadband solutions to support remote learning for students and school districts, as well as support and assistance to small businesses through our relief fund. This year, our Small Talks for Small Business provides you with valuable information to help you grow your business sales through social media. In this two-part series, we will be talking about social media during unsettling times. And to help us do that, we have enlisted our friends for VML YNR. VML YNR is one of the world's leading full service advertising and marketing agencies with an impressive 189 offices in 93 countries. And we're proud to be their client among some other very notable names. I am thrilled to introduce Kyle Boots from VML YNR. As a global vice president, Kyle drives strategy for clients around the world. He has worked with several Fortune 500 companies, leveraging online data to shape communications, brand, and business strategy. As an expert strategist, Kyle has guest lectured at Syracuse University, Pace Business School, and others. We are pleased to have him here today. One last note, the Q&A feature in our webinar is live. So if you have a question, please type it in the dialog box and we will try to answer as many as we can after the presentation. And now here's Kyle. Hi Kyle, handed it off to you. Hi, thank you so much. Um, thanks for the great introduction. I'm um, very, very excited to be talking about social media today and how it can leverage uh, can be leveraged in order to drive uh, brand and business growth. Um, so uh, why don't we get started? I am uh, again thrilled to be here. Um, my name is Kyle Boots. I am the uh, vice president of brand and social analytics, um, and I work with brands all the time of varying sizes. Um, one thing that's that's you know I found in working with brands is that social media can be um, really intimidating, no matter what the size. Um, what is your voice? What type of content do you uh, uh, you know push out to the world? Um, how do you engage with culture? Um, should you be talking about certain things, and and does it actually matter to your business? Um, today, we hope to answer some of those questions um, and uh, identify kind of key growth areas or growth opportunities for small businesses in leveraging uh, social media. Um, so we go to the next slide. Um, so hello again. Uh, this is what I look like. Um, go to the next slide. Um, so one thing I wanted to start off by saying is that counting likes, uh, shares, comments, engagements is really not enough. Uh, it really all comes back to your brand. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about 
what is a brand um, and how does it work for small business? Um, but the one thing I, I want to say is that for large uh, companies, an estimated total of $37 billion is predicted to be spent this year um, on social advertising. Um, but a recent survey said that only 18% of these marketers say that they can actually prove that this had any long-term impact on their brand. So these two numbers completely, um, you know, are, are in opposition to each other. We know that social media is incredibly important, but it's hard to identify specifically why. And so I think it's really important to focus on building your brand, your reputation. Um, that's really going to be the goal uh, with social media. And once you establish what your values are, what your voice is, what do you have to say to the world? Social media is a lot easier, actually, because then it's a matter of picking specific platforms that will help you uh, attain specific business objectives. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, just to give you a sense of how these two sessions are going to work. Um, part one, we're going to talk about your brand. What is a brand? How to build one? And why is it important to social media? Um, second, we're going to talk about business KPIs. How do uh, social media channels um, have the potential to actually drive your business? And lastly, we're going to talk about culture because we don't live in vacuums. We have to engage in the world around us. And the most successful and compelling brands in culture are able to actually embed themselves into cultural conversations that are already happening um, rather than kind of pushing out their agenda onto a potentially unreceptive audience. So it's really, really key to have a sense of the broader dynamics of culture whenever you're thinking about um, uh, posting on, on social media. Um, the second uh, session will get a bit more tactical. We'll talk about channels and selecting the right channel for your business. We'll talk about creative, and I'll share some tips about how to produce some really compelling uh, content that will help uh, move your bottom line. Um, and lastly, we'll talk about results. Measuring results is one of the ways that we actually learn from our mistakes and our successes and make sure that we're focusing in on um, tactics and strategies that are really working for us and that are moving the needle where we need them to. Um, so with that, let's get started. Um, go to the next slide. I want to talk about brand first. Um, so brand is something that every business should be thinking about. Um, you don't have to be a Fortune 500 company uh, in order to be investing and thinking about your brand. Um, it's really key because it's the, the thing that consumers and customers are going to remember about you. They have to walk away from their experience with one thing. You want them to think, well, this is a brand that I can rely on. This is a brand that's reputable, that I can trust, and that I want to do business with moving forward. So let's unpack what exactly a brand means. Go to the next slide. So what is a brand? Um, when we work with brands, we like to think that the brand is the vision and the driving force behind everything that an organization does. It's why the company was founded, it's why employees get up in the morning, and it's why their customers should care. So let's unpack this a little bit. If we go to the next slide. Um, the first section of this um, is really about your values. Um, so the vision and driving force, you should be thinking about what values are important to you as a business owner and also what values are important to your customers. Um, and that's something that should really be influencing every single decision that you make, even outside of social. Um, why the company was started. Why is that important? Well, your brand should reflect the way that you do business. Um, I'm sure you've all seen uh, commercials, um, you know, that that promise to fix the world. And then you look at actually how they do business and it's completely different. Right. Um, small businesses in particular have a unique opportunity to really tell their story this way. You founded your business for a particular reason. Um, and that's something that should be celebrated and the consumers will give you credit for um, employees. Uh, brands are not only external facing um, entities or ideas. People notice how you behave as an employer. You treat your employees well. And if your employees are working in an environment that's safe for people, especially during you know, COVID-19 and, and the, the current environment, um, employees can also be a huge inf uh, influencer for you. Um, if your employees are talking about all of the great things that you're doing as a business, that's going to drive traffic into your store. That's going to drive purchase decisions. And, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit when we dive into culture. 
But COVID-19 has really turned people's attention to the way that companies and brands behave, not just what they're promising to the world, but actually how are they accountable for specific actions. So even something as simple as, you know, we provide masks for our employees because we think that's important. That's something that people will notice and reward you for. Finally, why should your customers care? This should be the biggest thing on your mind. All brands, regardless of their category, their size, what country they're in, all brands need to balance the need to be both different and meaningful. And as you can imagine, those two things tend to be negatively correlated, right? The more different you are, the less relevant you're going to be to the wide possible audience. The more relevant you are and less special, maybe you feel a little bit commoditized. You know, I could go to you or I could go to any business to, to do my shopping. So it's really important to figure out a way to create that balance. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that um, uh, today. So we go to the next slide. Um, one of the ways that we look at brands is by uh, using this tool that we call BAV, which is Brand Asset Valuator. It's a division of VML, y and r And it is a brand study and database that allows us to collect millions and well, actually billions of posts, uh, uh, data points about brands. So what do they look like? How do consumers perceive them? What's the varying levels of usage and preference and knowledge? And you know, what's the overall equity of the brand? And we model all of that against financials. So anything that I'm about to tell you about brand is because we know, based on this study, that brand has a, demonst a demonstrable impact on your bottom line. Um, if you pull the right brand levers, you will draw, grow your business. Um, and this model allows us to identify quantitatively what some of those connections are. BAV Social, which we're going to be talking about mostly today, takes social media data from Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and other social channels, as well as Google search terms, websites. It takes all of the online data that we can get our hands on and models that against long-term measures of brand and business success. Um, and you can see that we work with some pretty smart people to make sure that this is reflective of real business growth. Um, so when I say that brand is an extension of your business, I truly mean that. It, it can be the most valuable tool that you have in your arsenal. And social media is an, is an extension of that. Um, if we go to the next slide, when we think about brands, we think about brands in four key ways. Is the brand different? Is it relevant? Is it esteemed or respected? And is it knowledge uh, uh, known or deeply understood, right? And each one of these has a specific meaning that we need to be aware of um, and a specific business context that it's tied to. So differentiation is all about your energy, your dynamism. You know, do I care enough to talk about you, to debate you? Um, you know, will I ref recommend you? Um, and so really that comes down to unique meaning. How unique is the meaning and the energy for your brand? Is that clearly articulated? And that's tied to margins, to PE ratios, to churn, to loyalty. So you can see that there are some tangible benefits here to having and investing in that unique meaning. Equally important to the notion of differentiation is the notion of relevance. Is it appropriate to me? Do I care? Is it meaningful to me? Um, and that relates to market penetration and the overall experience that your customers have uh, with your business. And so if you're able to balance the need to be different and the need to be meaningful, you have what we call brand strength. And that's really your future growth potential. Um, strongest brands and culture deliver really, really high on brand strength. But we also see that a lot of momentum brands, niche brands, startups, um, you know, these are the brands that tend to build differentiation first. So you actually have an advantage. It is much harder to change people's minds about a large historical company like GE or IBM than it is to shape the way that people perceive your, your business, uh, your small business. And so by focusing on that balance between differentiation and relevance, you can start to grow your brand. Um, so if brand strength is all about your energy, brand stature is about your mass, your credibility. Um, and that's composed of two pillars, esteem, which is the overall regard and respect that your brand generates. Um, and then knowledge, which is more than awareness. It's really a depth of understanding. So do I really feel that I understand what you're all about and what you have to offer? Do I respect it? Uh, is it meaningful to me personally? And is it different from what, all, what uh, all of the other businesses that I see in, in the same space? 
Um, so these are the key KPIs for your brand. And as you're thinking about what's important to you and why your employees get up in the morning and why you started your business, um, think about it in these terms. What's going to help me drive differentiation? What's going to help me drive respect? And if we can um, you know, focus on building each of these pillars, you can ensure that your social media presence is really going to be driving um, the right kind of growth for your business. Um, so let's move on to the next subject. Um, if we go to the next slide, your business. Um, I, I cannot state this emphatically enough. Social media is an extension of your business. It is not a side hobby. It's something that requires an intense focus, just, you know, like, I don't know, uh, doing balance sheets. Um, so as you think about how to actually um, enter the world of social media and start communicating directly with your consumers and your customers, you have to think about what your business objectives are. So if you go to the next slide, um, different channels are gonna help you with different business objectives. So indulge me for just a minute, I wanted this to be a little bit more fun. So let's say I am a huge donut fan. Um, if I wanna announce to the world that I'm eating a donut, um, Twitter is the channel for me, right? It's short form, it's real time, it's all about updates. I can get high visibility on that content. Um, and then maybe other donut lovers will share and retweet that content, right? Uh, if I want to share what I think about donuts, it's a bit different. You know, maybe the character limit on Twitter isn't quite right. Maybe it doesn't facilitate the right kind of dialogue. So I might choose to start a Facebook group or to engage people on Facebook and say, here's what I think about donuts. Um, if I want to share a picture of me eating a donut, just in case you were curious, I would go on Instagram and post that. It's a very, very visual uh, uh, you know, platform that'll help drive engagement through photos and compelling stories that you can create. Um, YouTube, um, really interesting platform right now, particularly for small business. If I wanted to like give a review of a donut, I might actually choose YouTube. Um, it's engaging, I can create a video, I can monitor a lot of the metrics and see how much engagement um, is coming from that. And also it's just a really compelling way to tell your story and to demonstrate that you're knowledgeable about the things that you're selling and the services that you're offering. If I wanted to engage in a bare knuckle debate online about donuts and what's better, sprinkles or glaze, I would totally go on Reddit. Um, Reddit is somewhere where you can just completely lose yourself in discourse. Um, and remember, I just said that the most compelling brands and culture are able to balance differentiation and relevance. But what that sometimes means is that, you know, the most compelling brands and culture are a bit polarizing, right? Um, the more different you are, the harder it's going to be to be relevant for everyone. And so it's important to have your brand and your business be the center of discussion. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing to participate in debates um, about the merits of various donuts, because it'll show that you're knowledgeable and that you're worth talking about. And then finally, if I wanted to brag about my uh, skills, which include donut eating, I might go on LinkedIn, right? Or if I were hiring other donut passionates, uh, I would probably uh, put a post on LinkedIn to say I'm hiring. So each of these different channels serves a different function, right? And so if I open a new location, Twitter is a great place. There's location-based tagging. It's very fast. People can pick it up. Um, if I'm holding a one-year anniversary event, Facebook might be better, right? Because I can tap into that community and really ensure that people are talking about me and that I'm fostering long-term connections with customers. Uh, if I want to showcase maybe renovations or a new store display, I would choose Instagram. Again, visual medium. To review or demonstrate how to use a product, YouTube is perfect for that. Um, and so as you think about these channels, I want you to think about what your business objective is. It does not make sense necessarily for a consumer facing brand to start off with a LinkedIn page, um, unless you're hiring or you know, your, your audience is really primarily business focused people. Similarly, if you're an accountant, it maybe doesn't make sense for you to have an Instagram. So you don't have to leverage all of these channels. Um, it is important to have a diversity of content, and we'll, we'll certainly talk about that today and, and in our next session. Um, but it's also important to think about doing one of these channels very, very well. Commit to it. Really own it. And think about the type of content that's going to support your business objectives. You go to the next slide. 
Um, and I just wanted to remind you a third time <laughs> that brand is an extension of your business. So 64% uh, of customers say that they would rather per make purchases from businesses that share their own values. And so a brand is going to be something that really helps you communicate that. If you say, this is what I'm all about, and this is why I'm different than the competition, that's a clear statement of values that's going to resonate with someone. And they're going to be loyal as a result because you're honest and you have actions that back up those claims. Um, you can amplify the impact of your brand by leveraging social in the right way. So 64% of customers say that they make a purchase after seeing a video. So videos are actually a really good tool for you. You can make videos on Instagram, on Facebook, or YouTube. Um, but seeing a branded social video gives people a compelling way to interact with you as a brand um, and really get a sense of your expertise. Um, color bright colors, that improves brand recognition. So think about a color system. Think about a color palette, right? How am I going to, to communicate visually um, what my brand is all about, the look and feel of my brand? And choosing a, a distinctive color can really help with brand recognition. Finally, consistency is important. About a third uh, or rather 33% increase in revenue can be generated by consistently delivering on brand presentation and branded content. So your Facebook page should look pretty similar to your Instagram page, which should look pretty similar to your website. And when you're thinking about how to kind of revamp your social presence or think about new ways to engage your customers, I want you to uh, think about this in terms of gradual change, right? Rome wasn't built in a day neither was any social voice. It happens incrementally. And so consistency, by putting that at the forefront of your social strategy, that'll help you, um, first of all, really clearly outline the values and what your brand is all about. And second, it'll actually make producing content a lot easier because you already know what the sort of template that it needs to fit into. Um, can we go to the next slide? So diving into this in a little bit more detail, if your goal is to drive brand awareness, you just want people to know that you exist in the world, um, Facebook or Google are actually going to be the best uh, for that type of objective. Facebook is great. Um, it is the largest social platform uh, in terms of daily active users. So you know that you're going to get lots of eyeballs um, if you leverage social or uh, Facebook the right way. Um, and that platform is really about socializing. It's about debating. It's about community, right? Content discovery. What are my friends saying? What have my friends interacted with? And how, you know, might that interact with the decisions that I make as a consumer? Your KPIs are going to be comments, likes, any engagement metric, but also your website traffic. As part of your Facebook business page, if you open a Facebook business page, you'll get access to something that's called Facebook Business Manager. And that's a platform that you can access online that'll tell you where your website traffic is coming from, how much of that is coming from Facebook, how much of that is coming from, is from specific posts that you, um, that you put out. Um, and it'll also help you keep track of something called fans, which are subscribers who are you know, signing up for a regular stream of content. And those are your brand passionates to start off. You know, any fan is someone who cares enough about your brand to really want to hear what you have to say. So take advantage of those people. Those are the people who maybe end up being your, your most loyal customers. Um, discoverability is another type of brand awareness. Um, and it's also referred to as SEO or search engine optimization. And so Google, we don't, typically think of as a social channel or social media channel, but it absolutely is. Um, and there's really two components to that. Um, in my opinion, every business should open a business, a uh, Google business account. Um, that means that you are findable on maps, or if I uh, search something on Google, your business would pop up. Um, and it's really important to make sure that you have a website that people can go to and that your website is clean, and that it's clearly labeled. Um, there are a lot of website you know, uh, templates out there. You can go to squarespace.com and buy a template and have the whole website built for you. Um, there's another company called Wix, which does the same thing. Lots of companies out there that will help you build your website. But the really important thing when you're building your website as it relates to Google is this idea of search engine optimization. 
So the way that a search engine works in broad strokes is that it pulls all of the different titles of the different sections of your website, and those are called anchor tags. So if you have a section of your website that showcases, I don't know, you're a beauty store brand and it showcases skincare, right? You could title that section of your website products, which probably wouldn't generate many hits, right? People wouldn't necessarily find you in searching products online or beauty products. Um, but if you put a little bit more thought into it and you said, okay, well, a lot of people who I talk to who have purchased things from me, um, they say that, you know, the, the glow is something that they notice with our products. Everything we sell, they notice a glow. So maybe your anchor tag or your section header, rather than being skincare products, could be, I don't know, skincare products to bring a glow to your day. And that way, when they're actually searching for those terms online, you have a better chance of getting your website up on the first uh, search results page um, on Google. And so when you're thinking about your KPIs, your website is going to be incredibly important. Is it clean? Is it easy to navigate? Um, are people actually finding my website from Google searches or do I need to rename those section titles or those anchor tags? And then also thinking about the page rank. You know, if I were to search beauty store, Long Island, how many search results come before mine? And, you know, if there are like, let's say 10 businesses that pop up in the search before your business, I would encourage you to go to their website and learn what they're doing. Steal from them, you know? Um, so um, I just wanted to move on. Uh, brand voice. This is something that could be developed by through Instagram or Twitter. Instagram is very visual. It's going to help you with, um, you know, more aesthetic content. Um, you can measure website traffic, reach, likes, comments, um, but that's going to be visual focused. Twitter, more focused on words. Um, so you can develop your brand voice in either way, um, just a different storytelling style, right? Instagram, again, more visual. You want to think about how all of your photos work together. Twitter, it's a little bit more ephemeral. And so you want to be thinking about how you engage with others and what you're talking about. Um, if you need to generate new leads, uh, LinkedIn can be a great place for that. It can also be a great place for you to build your personal brand as a business owner. Share links that you think are interesting, that are relevant to your category. Other business owners in the same space will know, and it'll help you build your network. You never know where you're going to get in your next business contact. And then finally, if you want to increase brand knowledge, YouTube is a fantastic place for that. It's a, an unusual way to tell a story. It's very video focused. And um, it provides you with an opportunity to tell a longer form story than any of these other channels. So think about the business goal and the platform will follow. We go to the next slide. Um, another thing that we need to think about in the world of COVID-19 is moving your business online. So a lot of consumers would rather you know, shop online than in a store, um, particularly now uh, in our current circumstances with the quarantine. Um, and that can be daunting to move your business online from an online first uh, to an online first strategy. So there are really four things to keep in mind as you do this. One, again, is develop your website. Um, whether you're using a template or building it from scratch, 38% of users will actually stop interacting with the website if the layout is unattractive. Um, so you want it to be clean. You want to study what other successful brands, big or small, are doing and learn from them and make sure that whatever you're doing on your website reflects the actual shopper's journey. Um, number two, collect and upload your data. So um, this may seem like a daunting task. We're actually in the midst of this ourselves and it's, it's uh, you know challenging to say the least, but you'll be thankful in the long term if you can upload all of your data, everything that you collect to a cloud environment, because that'll allow you to very quickly um, learn from any social media data that you're getting and identify whether it's driving your bottom line or your business objectives. So having all of that in one place will be a lifesaver down the road. Um, again, creating consistency. So across your channels, across all of your different touch points, which would include your website, your different social channels, your store itself, you want all of that to speak consistently about one cohesive brand. This is what I'm all about, and this is what I have to offer. And make sure that that's reflected in the visual language of anything that you do online. And then finally, set up Google Analytics. It's free. 
Um, it allows you to track an immense amount of information. And really, in this online environment, you want to make sure that people are visiting your website and that they're staying on your website and actually making a purchase. So having a monitoring system in place will help you learn from any mistakes and help you double down on strategies that are working. If we go to the next slide. So last section, culture. I'm going to fly through this because I think we all kind of know what's going on in the world. Um, but it is important to, to um, you know, leverage what you can in order to grow your business. So if we go to the next slide, um, there are really four key actions that brands are taking um, and, and specifically small businesses are taking in order to drive long term interest in their brands. Um, and COVID-19 has really gotten people a lot more interested in brand actions and what things are people are doing behind the scenes um, instead of just the promise and the sort of external things that, that mattered before. So if you are making a change in standard day-to-day -day operations, you know, having everyone wear masks, setting appointment times for, for customers, people want to hear about that. You're keeping them safe. Um, supply chain, what are you doing to ensure that there's a consistent level of service? That's going to help you in the long term build long-term equity, but also help you build customer-centric perceptions, higher perceptions of worth and value, dynamism, and it'll reinforce that you put humans first. Employee advocacy and consumer advocacy are really important to help you build different things. You know, they both help you build a customer centric persona, right? If you treat your employees well, that trickles down to me, the customer. But uh, employee advocacy will help you build premium and value oriented perceptions, while as consumer advocacy will reinforce how consistent and reliable you are. And I want to use, uh, if you go to the next slide, one large brand example, uh, McDonald's versus Walmart, right? When we think about social media, there's owned conversation, which is everything that you're putting out on your social channels. Um, and then there's earned conversation, which is the consumer conversation about your brand. So as you can see, Walmart and McDonald's are talking a lot about everything that they're doing for customers, but Walmart is getting a lot more credit for it than McDonald's is. And so you need to be authentic in the way that you're doing this. You can't say we're taking all these precautions and making all these sacrifices if you're not really making those sacrifices. So if you go to the next slide, it is important to think authentically about your brand. And small businesses that do that are rewarded, truly. Um, you don't have to be political. You don't have to you know, take a controversial stance at all. Just communicate with people. Um, people are interested in hearing those challenges and how you've overcome them to ensure safety and consistency for your customers. Um, if you go to the next slide and close, I just want to leave you with five key points. Um, one, gradual change is better than drastic change. Just you can evolve over time and that'll feel more organic and less jarring to customers. Communicate what you're doing. You shouldn't be scared of that. People want to hear and they'll value your honesty and the actions that you're taking. Ask questions to consumers, in store, uh, online, emails, anything. Ask questions. That's how you learn. And make sure to listen to your audience, um, not only what they say to you personally, but actually what are they posting? If your customers are primarily moms, what do moms talk about? What's important to them? When do they post? That's going to help you with your social strategy. And then finally, recognize what works. Um, if something's not working, don't stick with it. And if you have the right measurement tools in place and you're really introspective uh, about the content that you're pushing out, you can recognize what works and steer your brand into the right direction so that you're focusing on the things that really matter. So um, I think this is it. We can pass it over for questions. Um, there's time. Hopefully uh, this was helpful. If we go to the next slide. I, uh, all right. It looks like there's a couple of questions. Um, all right. I'm just going to grab a couple of these as they come on. Um, so what is the best small business platform? Is it just one? Is it several? Um, that's a great question. So we are going to be diving into channels deeper in part two of this conversation. But in my opinion, you should be leveraging everything that you can in order to grow your business. Um, I think every business should have a website, a Google business profile, and probably a Facebook page at minimum. Beyond that, you're going to need to commit to any channels that you leverage. So if you're going to open an Instagram account, you need to make sure that you're posting regularly and that you actually have a point of view to share. Um, it's better to manage one social media account better, uh, really, really well than, you know, have five accounts and, and, uh, you know, have them updated once a month. 
So think about the right channel for your business and how much you're willing to commit to it. Okay, um, how to use uh, business social media without taking too much time from other daily responsibilities? Um, that is a, another great question. Um, I understand that sometimes it seems like there aren't enough hours in the day as a small business owner, um, but managing social media should really be a part of those daily responsibilities. Um, thinking of social media as a side hobby is going to result in mediocre content, probably not as many business leads, and it will be a waste of time because you know here you are spending all of this time on things that aren't generating a lift to your business. So I would say that it should be a part of the daily uh, uh, you know, responsibilities. And you start by knowing your audience. Think about when they go online, what do they care about? Then look at a calendar and assess business goals over the course of the year and how they correspond to specific events in your customer's life. Things like Christmas, graduation day, you know, et cetera. And that'll help you identify what's called the content calendar. Um, Pre-planned content that can serve as tent poles um, for your social media efforts over the course of the year. And that'll help you really kind of build a, a, a content strategy around those major moments. So, you know, those, those daily posts, those daily updates, take 15 minutes out of your day, whether it's on your commute, doing your morning coffee, whenever you have the time and you're generating good ideas, um, and commit to writing a post. Um, you should try to write a post at least once a day. Um, if the post you know, doesn't land and doesn't get that much engagement, who cares? You'll post tomorrow. Um, and don't get it discouraged by the lack of engagement in the short term. Um, it takes a really long time to build a following, or not a really long time, but it takes time and investment. And if you can't post regularly, um, make sure to put a little bit of extra time and, and thought into the content that you do produce, because the expectations will be raised. If you're posting once a month, it needs to be a really, really good post. So consider that when you're um, uh, tapping into specific channels. Okay, lots of uh, questions. Let me see. Okay, I've heard about the Facebook boycott. How does that affect small business owners and, and should we consider participating? Um, that's really up to you. Um, individual business owners need to make that decision and um, identify what platform is right for your specific social media plan. Um, if it's important for you and your brand values to participate in the Facebook boycott, there are other platform options, um, and we'll be talking about channels in, in greater depth in the second session. Um, okay, so you stated that LinkedIn is for hiring. What about, oh, perfect, perfect uh, uh, question. Um, what about small businesses uh, who, who um, are targeting B2B audiences? So. LinkedIn is a perfect place for you then. Um, I would highly, highly encourage using LinkedIn for any B2B brand. Um, it's often the first one of the first channels that I check in the morning. And remember that LinkedIn, you actually are two brands, really. There's your personal brand as the business owner, and then there's your brand, your company page. And so your company page is going to serve a very specific purpose. It's going to provide updates of a business nature, maybe share some thought leadership or any opinions that you have or interesting links that you've read. Um, your personal page is going to be a lot of that as well. And it's going to be about sharing content, establishing yourself as a subject matter expert in this particular field. And so LinkedIn is a really great place for you to engage with others in the business community, but also um, to reach uh, uh, customers. Um, and there are a lot of lead gen tools that LinkedIn provides, similar to Facebook um, in a consumer context. So it's a great tool for you. Will a personal page or a business page, um, is that, uh, okay. Um, just on that last final point, um, always start a business page. That'll give you access to all of the um, metrics and analytics on the back end. Um, so I think we ran out of time today. Um, there were some really great questions, and I hope to, uh, to see you in the next session where we can dive in even deeper. Thanks so much.